Okay, this is going to be an awesome one. This is an introduction uh, for a 10-acre property with direct frontage, actually just over 400 feet of direct frontage on the Niangua River um, in Dallas County, Missouri, a few miles downriver from Bennett Springs State Park, uh, where they have a large trout hatchery. And this is in the small section of water where you can literally trout fish from the property itself. You can catch rainbow trout and brown trout from the actual property, which is pretty unbelievable. There are very, very, very few uh, properties in the in the nation where you can trout fish, successfully trout fish uh, from your property. If trout's not your thing, they've got bass, catfish, all that good stuff. But um, the, the thing that makes this one super, super rare is that you can trout fish uh, from the property. So uh, we'll jump in here. Here's the property. It's outlined in red. Uh, on the south side, it has frontage on Marigold Drive. It has about 90 feet of frontage there. And as you go toward the river, it gets wider and wider uh, until finally the north end, where it's the widest, uh, has just a little over 400 feet of direct frontage on the Niagara River. This property has been uh, fully surveyed recently. Um, generally, when a property is surveyed, they'll put pins in the corner. So there, there are four pins in the corners on this one. They generally don't mark the actual property boundaries because that's a big added expense. What we did on this tract and uh, the other tracts at Riverside um, at the Niagua was we we paid quite a bit extra to, to have them actually mark um, the full boundaries. So when you go out there, uh, you can uh, literally walk, walk the boundaries and you'll see flags and posts and stuff. It's very apparent where the property is. So that's a, a really nice bonus, especially when you go to build or when you go to put up a fence uh, to know precisely where your boundaries are, so super cool. Uh, I'm not really sure where to begin on this one. There is so, 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 so much to see. Uh, we try to keep the all the videos short, but this one may end up uh, running a few minutes here. So if you're interested, stick with us, and uh, we'll take a look at this property. I think first we'll I think first we'll pan out. We'll go way out. We'll show you uh, kind of the area. Whoops, internet's a little funky today. Uh, so this right here is the Barclay Conservation Area. That's several hundred acres um, conservation area where you can uh, kind of use and enjoy that. I believe it's open for hunting. I'm not positive about that, uh, but it has quite a bit of frontage on the river, and it's got a great spot right here uh, toward the south side where you can put your canoe in or your kayak or your raft or whatever, uh, and you can float directly down to your own property. Uh, and it's a short little float. It's good uh, for young people and, you know, old people that, that might not want to, like myself, that might not want a six-hour float. It's probably a, I don't know, 30, 45-minute float. It's just a, a perfect little float to, uh, to do in the afternoon. Um, and you've got access to all of this conservation land as well. But we'll go out a little further here. Okay. Whoops. There we go. That's what I wanted. So down toward the bottom of the screen, bottom of the video, uh, this is Bennett Springs State Park. I'm using the MapRite program, and I've got the layer turned on to show um, federal and state land. And so that's why that's highlighted. That's why the Barclay Conservation is highlighted, um, because those are uh, kind of like public public land deal. So Bennett Springs State Park, um, and within the state park, they have an actual fish, fish hatchery where they um, raise rainbow trout and brown trout, and they stock the Niangua River uh, with those fish. So they, they stock the river here, the fish filter on down river, and the trout fishing section um, on the Niangua starts at Bennett Spring, and it goes down river past the property to the Prospering Access here. That is the very limited section, <coughs> excuse me, where you can actually fish for rainbow trout and brown trout. I believe it's called the white ribbon section. I'm not sure exactly what that entails, but I've been told that uh, it's kind of the one of the better uh, um, designations as far as trout fishing. Uh, fewer restrictions, I believe. Uh, so especially nice. I mean, just unbelievable that to have something um, directly on the river. I mean, we just can't get over how, how unique this tract and these tracts at Riverside are um, to have real water frontage uh, on this river in this area, uh, and this amount of frontage. I mean, it's basically unheard of to have uh, a tract with 400 feet of frontage. Um, everyone we spoke to, uh, basically everybody that's from this area wants property on this river. They want a smaller tract. This is actually a huge tract, uh, but, but people 
had told me they've been looking for years and years and years for absolutely anything on this river, and it just doesn't become available because so much, uh, for one thing, there's quite a bit of conservation land, um, and the other thing is the resorts have bought all this up because this is an extremely popular section uh, of river. I mean, we're talking one of the one of the very top ones uh, in the Ozarks uh, for fishing, for floating. Uh, people put in at, at Bennett Spring State Park. They float all the way down. They can take out with their multiple takeout points. Um, but the Barclay Conservation Area is popular for uh, putting in and taking out. Uh, there are resorts all over the place. So so most of the stuff in this trout fishing section uh, has been bought up by resorts or is conservation land. Uh, or, alternately, it's too steep to be, to be usable uh, for recreational property. And we see a lot of that um, is that these darker green areas are generally bluffs, steep bluffs a couple hundred feet above the water. Um, so you may have a river view, but you don't have river access. So just the, the bare fact that we've got a property on this river in this area where you can actually get to the water and it has a high and dry building site, uh, it's just kind of the perfect storm of awesomeness uh, uh, in our minds. Um, so let's go, let's zoom out a little more. We'll show you right where we're located in the great state of Missouri in the uh, southern Missouri Ozarks. This is Lebanon right here. Lebanon's a good-sized regional town. This is uh, I-44, which uh, southwest goes down to Springfield, northeast goes up to St. Louis. Uh, to get to the property from Lebanon, you just go west. The, the easiest way to do it, especially if you're coming here the first time, is to go west on Highway 64 for, I believe, about 12 miles. You'll get to Bennett Spring State Park, and just before you cross the Niagara River, you're going to take a right onto Marigold, and you'll take Marigold north all the way directly to the property. Uh, if you actually cross the bridge over the over the river, then you went about 100 feet too far. Um, now, if you if you uh, are looking for a slightly quicker way, uh, the way we come out of Lebanon, we go west, I believe, on 64, and we cut north on a gravel road somewhere around here, and that shaves a, a few minutes off of it. But um, Definitely, probably the first time you get out here, the best way is to take 64 to Bennett Springs and just go north on Marigold, and that goes all the way up to the property. But as long as we're showing the area, there we go. It shows it pretty well. Okay, so just to the north, well, not just to the north, but to the north, um, about 20 miles, you've got the Lake of the Ozarks, very popular. In fact, the Niagara River uh, forms one of the major arms of the Lake of the Ozarks as it flows to the north. Um, to the southwest, about an hour, you've got Springfield, 20 minutes south of Springfield, that's Branson. Um, very popular area uh, for recreation. Uh, it's also, just because it's so centrally located, so here's the property. Uh, you go over to I-44 and you probably, from Lebanon, about uh, two, two and a half hours, two hours to St. Louis. Um, if you go to the northwest, uh, you've got Kansas City. Uh, so, I mean, you've got a lot of, of big uh, cities nearby. Jefferson City to the north, about an hour and a half to the north. Okay. So we're going to go back in here. So not too far out of Lebanon, but, but just a super uh, area for wildlife. Um, we were just out there yesterday, um, and I pulled in, and I expected to see deer. I did not. And then the guys pulled in about 20 minutes behind me, and they said, yeah, we saw like 15 deer uh, right up uh, in the upper field. <laughs> and then we saw turkeys later on. They actually saw a bald eagle yesterday morning. They were down um, in the lower field, and it flew right overhead. And I've seen that bald eagle a couple times, so we, we know it's out there. Okay, Google Map. Um, so, again, property outlined in red. Uh, Riverside at the Niagara, it's, it's about 20 tracks. Uh, most of them are these larger tracks, although some are, are smaller as well. Um, encompasses, this is the northernmost tract, or the northeasternmost tract, tract one, and then they go two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, down to uh, about here is the south side for the southernmost tract. So these yellow lines you see are the road easements. This is obviously the Niagara River. So this is an interesting property. Uh, Geez, I could I could talk for half an hour about this property, but I'm going to try to just try to just hit the highlights. Uh, you've got multiple access points. I think I briefly mentioned before that um, this does have high and dry building sites. So when you're looking at river properties, you generally have to have to choose 
Do you want a view or do you want access to the water? Because once you have access to the water, you're talking about flood zone uh, on basically every major river that, that we've ever encountered. And this is certainly a, a major river. Um, so actually what we can do here, we're using the MapRite program. We've got the full version and it actually has a layer for flood maps. So this is the FEMA floodplain. If I can get this to, okay, we're gonna turn on the floodplain. There we go. Uh, so that shaded area, that's going to be the, the FEMA floodplain or what a lot of people would call the 100-year flood zone, uh, obviously adjacent to a river. That's where you have it. Uh, here's the river right here. The reason there is no floodplain uh, as you go north from the river is because that's a bluff. That's about a 200-foot straight drop bluff. Um, and as you, well, you can see right here, there's a house there. There's a, a house over over here. Um, those people are building up there to get the view, but they have no earthly way to get to the water uh, because it's more or less straight down. So when you go to this uh, uh, south side, you've got access, gentle, beautiful access to the water, but this is in the floodplain. So you really can't build here. You don't want to build your house or cabin in the floodplain. Now, the amazing thing about this property, if we go to the topo map, this is all flat down here. Uh, basically flat until you get to the river and then it drops a little bit. But this is all in the floodplain. But as you move to the south, this land rises up. And right away, you get out of the floodplain. Uh, you've got a level area that could potentially be just a stunning building site. So you're going to have a view of the river. And you take your trail and you can walk right to the water in a minute. Uh, probably have a four-wheeler if you end up uh, using this a lot because they're great out here. Uh, you can take your four-wheeler, 30 seconds, you're at the river. Um, so you've got a high and dry building site that's out of the floodplain with that river access. So that's one of the numerous reasons why, why this is such a, such a rare property. Um, but while we're on the topo map, let's take a look at this. So it's the highest on the south side here uh, by Marigold Drive. Uh, on topo maps, basically the, uh, the lines indicate elevation changes. So from line to line on this map is an elevation change of 20 feet. The darker, every fifth line is darker because that's that's just a 100 foot interval. So there's nothing special about it. It's just showing a 100 foot interval. Um, so on this property, we're the highest on the south side. As we move to the north, we've actually got a little valley right here that goes down and back up again. And then as we continue north, uh, we have a, a more gentle valley. And then this is all one, basically one large ridge. If you kind of um, look at the way the topo map is laid out. Um, get down to about here and I think we have this in the ground video uh, because we I, I knew on the topo map that this looked like a good site but I didn't know if there was access to it well we discovered there is the potential for uh, uh, a road or a trail up up here um, come off the road walk up this way to your your private site that's out of the flood zone um, so also speaking of access so obviously we've mentioned you have direct access on Marigold on the south side there is no uh, approach. There's no culvert there. Uh, you could certainly install one. It's a couple feet, two or three feet um, above the road, the property is. Uh, so you'd be looking at probably half a day's worth of, of work with a, a skid loader, um, plus the, the price of the culvert, which is 300 bucks, I believe. Uh, so, I mean, you can put in a driveway coming right off Marigold, certainly. Uh, but alternately, and we'll switch back to the aerial for this, you have some other options as well. Okay. There we go. Uh, so this right here toward the bottom, um, I guess we can turn off the floodplain. There we go. Uh, this is uh, the existing access into the tracks. There's a little gate there. Um, you pull on in and this road goes down the hill to the bottom, uh, the bottom field, the river bottom field. Uh, but what you can do is in order to access the south end of the property, you pull in the gate, and instead of going right on the road, you go left, um, kind of skirting this field. Um, and there, well, there's a road easement to the south side. I don't know if there's actually a road installed, but there is a, a road easement within 50 feet of Marigold. Um, so you could potentially use that. But uh, there's an existing roadway uh, that the guys haven't put rock on yet or, or cleaned up, but there's an existing trail that goes kind of does a straight line across this field, hugs this tree, and then curves to the right. And it goes back through the tree line uh, to the actual property. So that's a, a deeded easement. 
um, it's a, a pretty good way to get toward the get onto the south side of the property without having to mess with an approach. And also as a bonus, um, you don't have to then cross uh, this, this valley area here. Uh, the valley is actually really steep on these tracks. It's not as steep on track one, uh, but it's still uh, kind of great that you can you can get to the other side without having to, you know, uh, cut in a road across the valley. So there's your access uh, to the south. Now to get to the north side, as we already mentioned, we've got this uh, main road that goes down the hill. Get to the bottom and it, you come to a Y where you're going to take a right and head on down through the, the beautiful bottom field. I mean, it's gorgeous. You're going to love it down there. And it goes northerly all the way up to Tract 1. On to Tract 1 and then it's, it, it dead ends. It uh, doesn't go through Tract 1. Um, so that's going to give you access to the north part and to the river without having to necessarily do your own private trail going all the way through. And you'd be welcome to do that. And I'm sure some people out here will do that. But uh, in the meantime, uh, you can get to the river immediately uh, just by using that existing uh, road easement. Uh, I want to mention you definitely want a truck or an SUV. These are gravel roads. Um, if it's been raining, if we've had bad weather, uh, they could be soft in spots or they could be rutted in spots. Uh, if you're in uh, any kind of truck or SUV where you've got a little extra clearance and ideally four-wheel drive, uh, you should be just fine. Okay, so while we're at the north end, okay, so this is uh, open meadow. You've got some trees in there. This is all relatively flat here with, with pretty good timber. Um, I think we, we see that in the ground video. And then as you get to the water, the water itself is just spectacular. Uh, just beautiful gravel bars, sandbars. Uh, there's at least one good spot um, where you could, I mean, you could launch a canoe from multiple spots, but there's one natural spot where you could bring your canoe or a kayak in today and walk it right to the water with no problem. Uh, over here to the east, you've got uh, Ho-Hum Resort. Um, so throughout the, uh, throughout the off season, there's not going to be much going on there. And then when the uh, uh, summer hits, uh, I assume that's a pretty popular resort. I mean, the thing is, because of the popularity of this area, you have these uh, resorts everywhere. You've got Ho-Hum toward the east. Over here to the west, that's Maggard Canoe. Uh, One-Eyed Willies, I think, is the next one down. It's just, uh, I mean, you see that because of the popularity of this area. So there's One-Eyed Willies right there on the lower left. Uh, so to be able to own a private 10-acre tract in this area uh, is, is pretty insane. Um, I could keep talking, I'm sure. Uh, I'm going to try to cut it off. I know the track does look uh, long and thin, and it is long, but I don't know if I'd call it thin. Even here on the south side, it's 90 feet uh, across, and then it, it, it widens as you move toward the river. So if we use the measurement tool here uh, at about the middle of the property, oops, a little over 200 feet wide, and then as you get down toward uh, one of the potential building sites, what what we believe would be one of the great potential building sites. Uh, you're looking at, whoops, over 300 feet across. Uh, so I mean, plenty wide to do what you want, to build any type of house or cabin that you want. Uh, we've got some basic property covenants on these tracks. Uh, you can check those out on the website. Um, just to, to keep the area looking great and keep everybody's property value high, we do have the some property covenants in place. Um, but yeah, we definitely love to talk to you about this. Uh, if you want to see if it's available, you just need to go to instantacres.com. Uh, that's where we show all the available properties. If you have any questions, uh, you can give us a call or you can send us an email at sales at instantacres.com. We'd be thrilled to talk to you um, about this property or any of our properties. instantacres.com.